Today's video is going to be a little different from what you're used to seeing from me. That's if you are a follower of my channel. If you're not, welcome. Um, today I'm going to talk about how I decided where to go wild camping for the first time. And the reason I wanted to talk about it, um, I've had a couple of people ask me how I went about making that choice and finding that spot. And I think when you are new to wild camping, the whole thing can be quite overwhelming and quite daunting. Obviously getting your kit together is fun and, and, and doing all that preparation is brilliant. And once you get there, obviously you enjoy being in the outdoors. But I think the biggest hurdle and the thing that makes people feel most apprehensive, I would imagine, and, and this was definitely the case for me, is knowing where to go, choosing a spot, because there's so many what ifs. You, you just go through all these questions in your head. So um, I'm gonna go through the process I took um, in order to feel confident and maybe throw in a few things that I didn't do that I could have as well. That And all of this is just in the hope to help somebody else out there. If you've got your gear and you wanna take the plunge but you're feeling a little nervous and a bit scared and not sure what to do, maybe this will help you, maybe not. But if it helps just one person, that's a good thing. Now, before I go into the video completely, I want to talk about your kit. The first thing I would always recommend doing is testing your kit out. I cannot imagine anything worse than being out, away from your car, in the middle of nowhere, and not being able to inflate your airbed which is something that nearly happened to me. I couldn't get my mat, my sleeping mat inflated. Um, I got there in the end, but if I hadn't have been able to, that would have been one uncomfortable night and I probably wouldn't have been able to carry on with it. So test out your gear, do it in your back garden, or if you don't have a back garden, go to a friend's garden, ask a family member, there must be somewhere. I was fortunate enough that I had friends who owned some private land and they were more than happy for me to go and, and test out all my gear there. So I was um, less than a kilometre away from my car. I spent a lot of time in, in that on that land as a child, so I knew the area well. Um, so that I really got an opportunity to get to know my kit well and make sure that I knew how to work everything and that I was comfortable and that I would cope in a in a wild camping situation. So that's that would be my first tip. Go out, test your gear. It will only build your confidence and you'll make mistakes, but you can learn from them and use them to your advantage when you go out into the middle of nowhere. So let's talk about things to consider, first of all. And the first thing on that list for me is location. Um, this was a big deal for me. I didn't want to wild camp anywhere where I wasn't supposed to. I know what I'm like, and that would have been hanging over my head the whole time. I'd have been worrying about it, about being caught, being asked to move on, upsetting someone, not knowing if it's private land or not. So for me, it was an easy decision, and I chose Dartmoor National Park because there are areas there where you are allowed to camp. Unfortunately, I ended up camping in an area that I wasn't supposed to, but I was completely unaware of that. Um, and that's all in my video, which I will um, tag in at the end of this if you wanted to watch my first wild camping experience. So uh, as far as I'm aware, there are two places in the UK where you are allowed to wild camp. One of them is Scotland and the other one is Dartmoor National Park. They're at complete opposite ends of the UK. So if you're in the Midlands somewhere, that might that may not be an option for you if you're not prepared to travel. Luckily for me, Dartmoor's only three hours away. So that was gonna be my location. So that's the first thing to consider is where you want to go. When you're making that decision, something else that is definitely worth thinking about is what you want from your campsite. What do you envisage? What's your vision? Do you feel most at peace? in the mountains, by a lake, uh, we're next to a stream or a waterfall, in the forest or the woods. So uh, have a think about where you would feel most at home and most connected to your surroundings. Um, and that should help you pinpoint a location as well. The other thing that I would consider, um, and this was a big thing for me, I'd only ever had one experience of carrying my pack and that was when I did my test 
run. So I was quite nervous about carrying this big heavy bag with all my gearing because I've never done anything like that before. So the distance from the car was something that I took into consideration. I wanted nothing more than to camp up in the mountains, but I didn't know if I'd be able to carry my bag up there. So I chose um, a lower level place and I wanted to be by water. That's the one thing I knew. So I wanted a stream or waterfall um, and um, I wanted something that wasn't too far away from my car. So I chose a five kilometre walk because I felt that that was something I'd be able to manage. Your distance, your fitness levels with, and however heavy your pack is might be very different. So you have to consider what is comfortable for you. What kind of terrain will you be walking on? Will it be boggy? Will it be snowing? Will it be raining? Um, you know, there's, will it be uphill? Will it be rocky? Will there be a scramble involved? So you need to consider all of these things because you know, you've got this heavy backpack to take with you. So for me, I made sure no scrambling, um, no inclines. Um, I wanted flat level and I reckon I could cope about 5k. So there was a little incline on my walk, which I coped with quite well. So I think I'll be all right climbing a mountain as long as it's not too strenuous in the future. So those are the things that I would suggest that you would consider when choosing your camping spot. The next thing I wanted to cover is research. What kind of research did I do and how did I benefit from doing that? So the first thing I did, once I'd chosen my location, which was Dartmoor National Park and close to a stream or river, was I got oh, my, my map out, my OS map, and I had a look um, at the local, at, at Dartmoor National Park. Now, it, Dartmoor National Park is huge. There's loads of places to choose from. So I actually went for somewhere that I have been before, um, Meldon Reservoir, I, when I climbed High Willows and Yes Tour. Now, I didn't camp, I just did a hike. But I know Meldon Reservoir, I knew there was a stream that ran into it, so that was gonna be my choice. So I opened up my map and I had a look and I followed all the walking routes um, and I found an area that I thought looked quite nice or could be quite nice on the map. There's only so much information a map can give you. The next thing I did, once I had a rough idea of the route that I wanted to to, walk, or to hike to get to my campsite, was I went onto um, Google Earth, which is an excellent tool if you're going somewhere you've never been before, because you can actually visually look at what's around and, and you can get an idea of the area. Um, and how you do this is obviously you go onto Google Earth, you can search the area that you're going to, and I'm not very good with technology, but I will try and do something to show you how to use Google Earth if I can, even if it's just pictures or screenshots. So go onto Google Earth, search for the area that you want to go to, and click on, there's a little man on the screen which you can click on, and that will highlight areas in blue. If you click on the blue area, it will then give you a 360 view of what that area looks like, which is what I did. Unfortunately, the area that I went to didn't have a lot of highlighted areas for me to zoom in on and have a look around. Um, there were only a couple, but it was enough to give me an idea and let me know that I would be happy there and, and it was a pretty place to be or, or a beautiful place to be. So that was the first, uh, so first thing I did was OS Maps. Second thing I did was look on Google Earth. The third thing I do, and I do this, whether I'm doing a hike, uh, chasing waterfalls, camping, whatever, I always do this. I go onto YouTube. YouTube is a fantastic tool. And I just typed in wild camping, Dartmoor National Park, and I watched a few videos and I made notes of areas that looked good. Um, and that, it's another way to get a good vis visualization of the area that you're going into. If there is flat terrain, if it's rocky, you know, if it's boggy, uh, going onto YouTube and watching other people in the area is a really good way to, to scope out an area. Now, the last thing you could do, this isn't something I did, uh, but you could do if you're close to the campsite uh, that you've chosen, is do a dummy run or go and have a recce. Uh, obviously Dartmoor for me is three hours away. There's no way on earth I was going to drive there 
have a look around, try and find a camp spot, you know, to then go back a week later with all my gear. That's not an option for me, which is why I do the OS Maps, Google Earth, YouTube, all that research. And I'm sure there's other tools out there as well that you can use, but these, I'm really new to this and this is what I've found so far and this is what's working for me. So if you know of any, any other apps or websites, please feel free to comment and let me know what they are and I'll check them out because the more research you can do, the more confident you feel in, in getting out there and enjoying it, knowing what to expect. So yeah, if you're able to go and do a recce, have a walk around, use the what, what Three Words app to log the area if you find it, if you find one that you think would be good for camping, and then away you go. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you found it useful. What's stopping you? Get out there, do it, trust me. Once you've got it done, you will feel amazing. Such a sense of achievement. And being outdoors and feeling connected to nature, mother nature and what's around you is so good for the soul. And I encourage everyone to, to, to just get outdoors more. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.